Join Twins K.N. Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers, at the Vision, Identity, and Purpose seminars. Receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life. I'm here with my brother, K. Taiwo. I'm Olu Taiwo. Thank you for tuning in. As we usually say, call a friend and set your DVR. Also, I want to remind you that we have an app. So when you visit our website at visionforlifeministries.org, you can get the Vision for Life Ministries app. I'm sure it will be a great blessing to you. We have programs that you can listen to and even have uh, links to our videos that you can watch. Okay, what a powerful program we have today. Very, very powerful program. Today we're going to be talking about friends, friendships, defining friendships. And the subject is such a historically, uh, what I say, confusing uh, be uh, subject because people oftentimes misdefine. They define it one way and the other person defines it another way. Some people call friends that should actually be <laughs> acquaintances. acquaintances. So today we're going to be talking on the subject of friendship and having a biblical framework for the subject or on the subject of friends. But before we go further, I'm going to read from uh, a quote here from Howard Hendricks, professor of da Dallas Theological Seminary. He says, every man should seek to have three individuals in his life, a Paul, a Barnabas and a Timothy. Then he goes on to define what he means by that. A Paul is an older man who is willing to mentor you, to build into you into your life, not someone who is not someone who's smarter or more gifted than you, but someone who's been down the road, someone willing to share his strengths and weaknesses, everything he's learned in the laboratory of right, of life, somebody whose faith you want to imitate. Then he goes on to talk about a Barnabas. A Barnabas is a soul brother, somebody who loves you but is not impressed by you, somebody to whom you can be accountable, somebody who's willing to keep you honest, who's willing to say, hey man, you are neglecting your wife and don't give me any guff. Then he goes on to talk about the Timothy. A Timothy is a young man into whose life you are building for a model. And it says, for model, read uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 2. Here was Paul, the quintessential mentor, building into the life of his protege, affirming, encouraging, teaching, correcting, directing, and praying. And then he concludes, do you have these three guys, and I'll add, ladies in your life? In other words, everyone needs people to occupy a certain space in their lives. And depending on how you define that friendship, that determines the amount of space they occupy. There's some people that are closer to you and there's some people that should be way farther away from you. Even Jesus did that. There were certain disciples that were closer to Jesus, not because there was a favoritism, but Jesus understood the, the roles they will play. They will play and future. based on the roles they will play in the future, he either kept them closer or put them on the outside of a certain distance. And then, not even that, see, not only that, you had the, the 12, then you had the three. Yes. But apart from those, you also had the crowd. Yes. They were on the, on the outskirts. Yes. They came to him at special times yes. when he had a message. Yes. So he came to the mount. Right. The, and he was given the, me the message on the, what we call the Beatitudes. Yes. Those were the group of people True. that came at that moment. There were other cases. Somebody had a need. Yes. They came specifically to have that need met. Yes. They would be a miracle. They had a sick loved one. Yes. Or they, they themselves were not uh, yes. altogether. They, they needed help. They came to him. Right. So people came to Jesus for different reasons. Yes. And those people occupied a different space. True. Then you have the opposing crowd, like the Pharisees, yes. that were constantly trying to yes. pick at him. They had a certain space. And all of us have... We have to define the space that people have. Yes, absolutely. And that's why by defining it, it creates, because when you, when you don't define your friendships, you're setting yourself up for disappointment because friendships built into it are expectations. expectations. And we can see today that in the social media arena, 
Facebook, for instance, someone you get a, what they call a friend, friend request. request. We throw around the word friend so lightly. So if someone becomes a friend based on the definition of on social media. So what does that really mean? Does that mean that a person is truly a friend? What do you, what expectation do you have? Exactly. You know, so it's something that we cannot escape. And when the, the, the term is thrown around so lightly, people tend to devalue what it really means. And in Bible days, when they use the word friend, there was a deeper level of closeness and attachment and expectation. Jesus even goes as far as to say that, that a friend lays down his life. No greater love than as a man, than a man, than a man who laid down his, his life, life for his, his friends. Friend. So what kind of friendship is that? That's the a, that's a highest level of friendship, obviously, because not everyone can lay down their lives for us. Not everyone is there at our most deepest time of need. But that tells us that how we see friendships sometimes are culturally based. Based on the culture we come from, we have a certain lens as to how we see friendships. And based on that culture, we impose that impression, expectation on others. And the distance between what we expect and what actually is real determines the degree of our disappointment. Would you not say? Yes, sir. yes I'll say that. I think the key thing you just mentioned in every friendship Built into every friendship is expectation. Yes. Built into every friendship is expectation. When you, for instance, view the friendship, quote unquote, as being close, but the other person sees it as a mere acquaintance, you're bound to be disappointed. Yes. The one that has a higher expectation, that's why you have, so when you believe that this person is a friend, and then they don't meet up to the expectation. And to, to them, they're saying, well, we're just buddies that hang out. Mm. But you took it to another yes. level, even emotionally, yes. it's going to have, gonna have a, a, a very yes. big disappointment. True. And so, so it's very crucial. That when we say define friendship, what we're not saying is you don't walk up to the person and say, <laughs> you're not no, my you're friend not. or you're just an acquaintance. No. We're saying you are taking mental note and assessment yes. so that you know how to put people in a different place and hopefully they do the same to you. Yes, yes. It takes understanding to yes. rightly define the kind of acquaintance and friendships you have. It's understanding because the expectations that are imposed upon you is based on the perspective that that person has. So there's certain things that we ought to look at to judge if, and the thing about friendship is, is, is time-based. Yes. Over time, I think the best test of a friendship and things obviously start out with introduction, yes. acquaintance, and then they go into the level of friendship. Sometimes things stay at the level of acquaintance because they ought to stay at the level of acquaintance. But even in the philosophical uh, definitions of friendship, they, they have three understandings of what type of friendships. And each friendship is defined as a level. So let's even go into one of those levels as a, for a start. Level one, friendships of pleasure. This says we have fun times together. Will you want to elaborate on that? Yes. So birthday parties, I invite you to my uh, son's birthday party. You invite me to your son's birthday party. Or let's go bowling together. And that's the extent to which the friendship goes. Yes. Or we have soccer today. Or every yeah. Tuesday we meet up at, at mm -hmm. soccer. Or it could even be parents that take their child to soccer and they, because they, they by, by chance, they meet each other on the soccer field, right. they develop a friendship, but it's only based on that yes. season. Because yes. sometimes the soccer disperses, yes. you, the season's over, and yes. the friendship ends. And you don't it. contact it. That's a friendship of pleasure. Yes. It's just at the moment. It's just yes. that, okay, let's, let's do this thing together. Let's go check out this game, ball game, mm. things like that, casual stuff. Interesting. And that's very interesting because what if you look at it as a friendship of pleasure and the other person takes it more seriously? That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem because they're going to impose certain expectations on that friendship. And when you don't meet... What they expect, it leads to disappointment, it leads to frustration, it leads to some irritation. Some clashes may happen as a result of undue expectation because 
the friendships were not well defined from the beginning. But I have a question as a follow-up to this. Okay, you have someone that in your mind is a friendship of pleasure. How do you make them aware or how do you, without coming across in a certain way, how do you give uh, voice to where the friendship is. That's a is. very, very, very good I'm question. I'm sure those of us watching there That's are thinking very... scenarios in your mind. You know Absolutely. people right now that maybe they've been trying to get closer to you, but for some reason you, you are at a state of pause because you're not really sure if you should take it to the next level. I think one of the ways you can determine that is by your level of formality. The more formal you are, that's the degree to which it shows. If someone is more formal to you, that means that they're not willing to open up. That means that that is not a close, true friendship. So you may have fun times together, but when it comes to personal issues, you sort of test the waters. You ask questions that you, you want to get more uh, close, and they express a sense of formality. That means they're, in, they're telling you in a subtle way, that there's certain boundaries. In other words, take the cue. Take the and cue. So many people don't always <laughs> take the cue. And make they, sure. They go full yes. steam ahead. Yes. And they head for disappointment. And make sure you two also present the right cues too. Yes. If you think that that friendship should stay as a friend of pleasure, just fun times, soccer practice or bowling or something like that, you in the areas don't don't open up to people and lead people and this even happens in relationships in relationship, that's a big where one. people are just want, wanting to be acquaintances but they give off the vibe that is more than that so how do you do that by formality there's certain things that you do not allow there's certain things that you do not say that gives the impression and some people unconsciously they tend to give off a vibe that the, the friendship should be taken to a more serious level when really they don't mean that. So they lead people to believe it. And then when that person puts a demand on that friendship, they find out, wait a minute, that person, and then it looks as though that person doesn't have integrity, that they're just putting on a, a, a fake facade. So we have to be mindful of that, that when we meet people, we should not lead them down a road that gives them a false in. Pressure. And I think also that's where it is very huge in the area of social media. I think social media in many cases has diminished the importance of friendship, even one-to-one -one relationship. People think about the virtual world of friendship, yes. that are you put a post and the person likes it. Yes. People get, that does not really test. Yes. Would you say it does Absolutely. not test the, the, how close uh, uh, that person is? Yes. Because I've, I've heard stories where people were friends on, on social media, but now when they meet, there's a totally different impression. Because also on social media, people are going to hide their weaknesses yes. and they flaunt. Put their best they feet put forward. Their, best, <laughs> their best feet forward. Yes. And their best show forward. Yes. And people are wrapped up in the image that they see. Yes. But when they meet the person yes. on a one-to-one, on -one, I've heard stories like that, totally opposite. That in this case, they, they thought they were, would yes. like to be that person's friend, right. but they decided when they met them that right. no. You may take a uh, hundred pictures and you select the, <laughs> the best. best. Yes. And that's what you showcase. Yes. So you always put the best impression forward and you don't really show the real person. In other words, if the person really showed the real person, would you like that person? And you see, that's the, that's the whole point, that perception is based on the social media, it doesn't tell the full picture. And that's why we have to give things time. We have to meet people yes. and see where it goes. Over time, something will obviously start as an acquaintance and can lead to a friendship. Sometimes, some things can have the potential to be true friendships, but now they have to be downgraded yes. to an acquaintance level because the values are not shared. Now let's move on to level two. Level two says friendship of utility. In other words, when you have a need, we help each other out. That's what utility means. So something, maybe you need to borrow my car because your car broke down, you know. Many times our paths only cross when there is a need that needs to be met. And so those are friendships of utility. So level one, we said friendships of pleasure. Level two, friendships of utility. 
also we think about each areas like needs. like even your next door neighbor. Yes. They may not be you may not be close friends, but you tend to look out for each other and yes. help each other. Yes. And many times that's the extent to which, which it is. Oh, I see you left your car light on. Mm -hmm. you, I, you need to, I just observed that you left your car light on. We look out for each other. Oh, I yes. saw a stranger at your house. I mm -hmm. didn't know if you knew, were expecting somebody. Mm -hmm. We look out for each other. So that's a level. It doesn't go beyond that. We no. don't always have dinner. and no. you, you don't know what I mean? Those things are not there. But yes. it's utility. When you have the need, I meet the need. Or you yes. need money, I can, yeah. I can give it. We can put into that category also co-workers. Yes. Yes. You can identify. You have a co-worker that the relationship you have with that co-worker doesn't go beyond <laughs> the door of the office. Yes. Once you leave the office, you have no other uh, connection. Association. No association. It's just when you're at the off office. And when you're working at the office, you guys maybe go out to lunch. You, oh, I need uh, some change. You, can you help me out? You help each other in that way. But it doesn't go beyond that. Is that what we're absolutely. saying? Utility? Absolutely. Absolutely what we're saying. And this is uh, basically, it, it's at a certain level, but it's not at the highest level of friendship. And the last level three is called true friendships or friendships of, of character. character. Yes. And what does this friendship say? It, it, say, it says that we speak into each other's life. We build each we, other up. We build for each other for life. Yes. In other words, as a covenant basis for that. It's the biblical definition of friendships. Now let's look at uh, uh, Proverbs 27 verse 6. Proverbs 26, uh, 27 verse 6 says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. In other words, a true friend doesn't have to mask what they really feel. They tell you like it is because they want you to know what their true feelings are on an issue. Because by doing that, it means that the mask is removed. And one test of a true friend, or like there, we talk about formality. Another test is diplomacy. Anytime there is too much diplomacy, diplomacy in a red relationship, flag, red, flag. red flag, that's yes. not a true relationship. Yes. Because diplomacy is a way to deflect that's true. conflict. That's true. So if there's too much of diplomacy going on, this scripture says right here that faithful are, are the, the wounds, wounds of, of a, friend. a friend. In other words, a friend will tell you, tell you yeah. as they see it because yeah. they know they're interested in where you're going. They want you to fix whatever is wrong. If you're heading in the wrong direction, they want to make sure you make a course correction. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. That's diplomacy. That's just sugarcoating words because yes. you don't want any conflict. Yes. That is not a true friend. And that's because, that could even be part of the test. When you find somebody that's always diplomatic, I mean, you met some certain people, perhaps you're watching met people like that, that you can really never tell what's on their mind. Mm. They always seem to sugarcoat or never, they never take a stand on any issue. Because it's almost like as if they don't want to offend. Have you met people like yeah, that? Absolutely. That you never know. You've known them for years, but you can never really pinpoint yes. what did they stand for. Yes. That's so not you true can't friend. really get that. You can't be really a friend with that kind of person. I mean, right. in the true sense of the word, when no. the Bible says faithful are the, are the wounds, wounds of, a friend, of a friend, which means a friend will tell you the truth. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking of example of uh, Jonathan and David. is one of the good examples yes. of true friendship. Yes. I mean, Jonathan was <laughs> heir to the throne. But in David, he saw a friend, mm. somebody that he was more concerned about David's destiny than his own. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Based on lineage, he should have been the next yes. in, in command. But when he knew that destiny was upon David to be king, he deferred to David. That is a very unusual yes, very kind of friendship. Unusual. You don't even, it's, it's very rare today. It's rare. Because most Absolutely times rare. you see people have self-interest. Yes. They put, <laughs> put themselves first. Yes. And sometimes that's one of the difficulties of being a, a friend today. You, 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 you have to have that kind of uh, discernment. Mm -hmm. that is this person really yes. wanting to be a friend Absolutely. for the right reason or do they have ulterior motives? Right, right. So you could say, look at it, we, we talk about three levels of friendship. Friends, friends of, of pleasure, friends of utility, utility, and then true friends. True friends of Now of look, look at that. 67%, if you're going to put in percentage, are not real friends. That's, They're more isn't that something? acquaintances. Yes. But the vast majority will consider that 60% friends. 
So I would say we, we have to know how to define friendships yes. because they will misconstrue these level one and level two, utility and pleasure, as true friends. And that's where they built in a certain expectation and it's, it's dashed. So it tells you that most of the people that we come across are not true friends. They're mere acquaintances. That's true. And the sooner we know that, the better it is for us to make that proper assessment so that we can, uh, and the, 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 the thing about it is that you don't want to have too many <laughs> true friends. Because if it takes that level of commitment to have a true friend, it also will follow that you can't have too many people speaking into your life. You need key people. Look at, at the beginning of the program, we talked about a Paul, a Barnabas, Barnabas and, a and a Timothy. Timothy. You need some stra strategic people talking into your life and you talking into their lives. Some on a peer level and some as a mentor to a protege. But you can't have too many people talking into your life because it is too time consuming and it will drain your energy to have too many friends. And I would venture to say that it is unwise to even have the mentality I'm a friend to everybody. I'm everybody, everybody's friend in the true sense of what friendship is. If we're thinking that you're going to be a friend to everybody, a big mistake. Yes, absolutely big mistake. And I'll read another scripture, Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17. Iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. So which means a real friend brings out the best in us. Yes. In fact, we, we were talking about this even before the show. Mm -hmm. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. So a man sharpens, sharpens the countenance of his friend. friend. In other words, that word that says uh, sharpens, that was what we were, we were looking at earlier. Yes. Sharpens means with, with purpose. Yes. Which means a intent. deliberate, deliberate intentional. Intent. Yes. You want to make that friend shine. Yes. In other words, you're not his competition. No, no. <laughs> you're not his competition. That's true. It is difficult to be a friend, a close friend, with somebody who sees you as a competition. <laughs> Absolutely not. It it's is It's more difficult. of a rivalry then, than a yes. friendship, right? Yes. Don't you see that happening too? Yes. Where people will get close, but the other person is constantly trying to one up the other yes. person, rather than raise the other person's yes. value. They try to one up. So that yes. person does. You try to overstep them yes. or, or do something to try to put them down instead of trying to raise them up. Yes. We can raise each other up. True. That's what's true friends. So what you say, like uh, you talked about uh, uh, destiny helpers. Yes. That's what a true friend is. In yes. other words, God has a plan for your life. I want to see that the best that God has for your life comes out of you. And likewise, you do the same to me. So we are both, that's what to sharpen means, to bring out the best. But when is a rival, a rival once, like you said, wants to one-up you, that he's doing that, let me find how I can outdo that person. And it's not necessarily a complimentary thing. It's more like always wanting to outdo you so I can shine and you are diminished yes. by my shining. I can That's not of, a true friend. I can friend. think of an example that happened during the height of the tent revivals. I yes. told this story before. Yes. This evangelist was a leading evangelist in the United States, and he was very big in mm. tent revivals. And he gets a, a call at 3 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> when you get a call at 3 in the morning, you're thinking something urgent. What's yes. going on? I hope everything is okay. Yeah. So you're half, probably half asleep. Pick up the phone. And what was the, who was urgent the person? Message. Who was the person? <laughs> it was another fellow evangelist. And his message says, hello? <laughs> I just want to let you know that I have a bigger tent than you do. Amazing. So he saw his fellow evangelists, they should, should have been co-laborers doing the work of God. Covenant partners covenant in the kingdom. Partners, helping each other to mm -hmm. fulfill the Great Commission. But instead, he That's got a, a bigger tent, and he, he said, this is an opportunity. Let me tell you, it was burning on him that at 3 a.m. In, in the morning. Why he was awake at that moment, yes. it's, it's yeah. even a mystery. Yes. But he calls this man and wakes him up and tells him he has a bigger tent yes. than, than he does. And I remember another example we heard even recently. Yes that uh, this uh, gentleman, this pastor, uh, built at that moment, at that time in, in, in the American, 80s, in the 80s, yes. the biggest church auditorium in the United States. I think it's seated about 6,700. Something like that. And he receives a call from another minister. And what does this minister say? I begin to ask him a question. 
That auditorium you've just built, can it be expanded? Does it have the potential in case you need to pull and add more seats? So he yeah. said, no. He said, are you sure? Have you uh, talked to the engineers? He said, yeah, the engineer says we have a capacity. We can expand. And the man replies him. He says, oh, good. Oh, good, because I'm about to build a 7,000-seater auditorium. Com competition. <laughs> competition. These things go on. So how can you be a true friend with somebody who sees you as, as their a, rival? As a rival. And that's why true friends, number one, we, we eliminate diplomacy, we eliminate formality, and we, we lim eliminate rivalry. See? Rivalry, formality, diplomacy. You take it away, and there's a true friendship because iron sharpens iron. iron. In other words, both people are iron, they have the same uh, value system, and they bring out the best in each other. So I see what you were saying, even the value system is, yes. is crucial. Yes. The person who wants, who wants to become your friend and whose friend you want to become have to share co some common values. Absolutely. That becomes the glue for the friendship. Yes. It yes. is absolutely nothing in common, then it is hard to become a friend. Absolutely. So even within the body of Christ, you, you, you'll find out that there are certain people that maybe they're going in the same direction of ministry or going in a certain direction of a project. Mm. You find yourself, Yes. there has to be something, a common True. value. Would you, True, would, would absolutely. You and those are the people that you can have, uh, when you say fellowship, there's a... Uh, we're both fellows, and we are moving, I would say, in, in the, the same, same ship. ship. Yes. You know, yes. we're moving in the same direction. But when people are going in opposite directions, can two walk together except they be in agreement? Yes. They That's can't. They can't. That's so true. we have to be moving in the same direction. Absolutely. I want to thank you for tuning into the Vision Guided Life. I am very convinced that God has spoken to you. And right now you're evaluating your friendships. And what we're saying is that prayerfully consider this message because your destiny and the destiny of others relies on the decisions you make. Remember, transformation, transformation takes, takes place through, through identification, identification with, with Christ. Christ. God bless you. There is a purpose for time. You need to understand the seasons of your life. Learn to identify God-given opportunities, the value of preparation and how it affects your purpose. Explore five principles of time and seasons. Four principal players that influence time, biblical proof demonstrating how history repeats itself, and much more. Thinking for a change, revival of an accurate value system, powerful insights that will absolutely change the way you think for the better. This message is full of timeless principles that will put you ahead. If you deem your future valuable, this is a message you must obtain. All for the gift of only $25 or more. Your gift helps us to spread the gospel through this program. Kay and Olu are also adding the DVD of today's program as a bonus. This package will transform you into an agent of positive change for the kingdom of God. Visit visionforlifeministries.org or call 1-844-334-2197 to order right now.